What's up, Regen Ag Nation? Out in the field of onions today in the great state of Washington. Man, what a great day it is out here, about 70 degrees. This is perfect growing degree weather for the early season. I uh, want to bring you in close on a couple of things. One, notice that we sprayed these weeds, um, just trying to keep these fields clean, right? That's the biggest thing for onions is they can really get choked out by weeds early in the season. So it looks like we've made a pass through here. We're trying to take care of that. If we can get these weeds early, then we don't have to send crews through later. Uh, we don't have to utilize a lot of chemistries that maybe if we didn't stay on top of that. Now I want you to key in on one thing as well. Bring the camera down right here. The drip tape runs right along here. I want you to look down that way if you can pan down. Now what you're gonna see is the inside row has a lot more of a lime color to it. The outside row is a little bit darker. Maybe you can catch that as you come back out. Oftentimes what happens early season when we irrigate is you wanna give them a little bit of drink. Sometimes we're wanting to get them to pop through the soil. Uh, but when we water and when we irrigate, we actually cool these beds down. So these ones right here by the tape, they tend to get more water than the outside row and they tend to yellow up a little bit more um, I want to show you that because I think that's important. That can kind of stall out growth. We really want these things to grow as evenly as possible throughout the season. Uh, we want them to finish at the same time and really have that nice size. So um, follow along out here. Let's check in on a couple other things. So as I'm walking, I want you just to know about the details of these field. Um, you can tell that they're all on GPS. Lines are straight. Farmers paying attention to details here, and that's huge. Details matter. Timing is everything in producing a great crop, and all these details add up throughout the season. Uh, looks like we've also gone through, we've made a little bit of a pass mechanically on the inside to just take out some of those weeds. That's a big, big deal as well, because as you can tell, the soil kind of seals up a little bit on the top. This isn't kind of a crust, but it does sort of seal up a little bit. What happens there is you lose that oxygen exchange that the roots really need. So another thing that comes through when they make a cultivation pass is you really allow a lot of oxygen to come into that soil. Uh, the roots start kicking in, the biology starts going, and it really creates a nice growth flush. So we're kind of killing two birds with one stone there. Taking care of weeds, we're getting the crop to kind of flourish and bounce back from an herbicide pass. And uh, we're looking really good out here Farmer's done a good job on timing, paid attention to details. We're set up for a really nice season. Okay, so I want to show you just a little bit of something that's kind of a bummer here. Uh, you can tell we also have a little bit of herbicide damage. Um, you can see it in the yellowing in the leaves. You can also see some of this curling and actual physical damage where the particles have land. Uh, unfortunately, that's just kind of a, a necessary evil in this case we got to control weeds early to have a good crop. It gets really expensive to control them by hand later. So making this application is necessary. And oftentimes it's economically feasible, even if you lose a plant or two, that's real small. Um, oftentimes it makes up for it in the long run. You notice the color of some of these other leaves and even this one, it's starting to kick back in. Um, next, we're gonna take you to a field this grower actually has adopted some new technology. So in this case, we just made a broadcast application. And so we're getting these weeds, but we're also getting the onions as well. This grower has kind of a regenerative piece of equipment. It's a targeted sprayer. So it'll move across this bed and determine if it's a weed or an onion. And it just sprays those weeds versus the onions. So in those fields we want to show you this because we're going to have a lot less damage on the onions you're really going to notice a lot different growth and we're still going to be taking care of those weeds it's an awesome piece of equipment can't wait to check it out we're at this field where we went through with the eco spray okay so what the eco spray does is instead of broadcasting across the entire field and getting a lot of non-target spray it's just visually looking for the weeds so come down here you can see it's sprayed these weeds sprayed all these weeds but it's left these plants alone now if they're in there if they're in the way they might catch a little bit out the top but for the most part as you look down at this row of onions here 
you can see that they're totally untouched and they've got a lot of growth to them. Um, when we have to utilize things like herbicides and fungicides, it actually slows down photosynthesis, protein synthesis, things like that for plants. So they stall out for a little bit before they metabolize that and get going again. Um, we're gonna dig a couple of these up just to show you the size difference in fields that were planted right around the same time. So we're back to the truck, we've dug some of these. So what we've got is we've got a field with buckdrill and goal, early season application. And we've also got a field that we sprayed with the eco spray, uh, eco robot that just targets the weeds themselves. So first thing you wanna pay attention to, look at them, they're all shaped like a number nine. Uh, they got some curling, which is kind of indicative of uh, goal spray. Um, you can see they've got some pocking where there's actually some damage on those leaves. And then the other thing I want you to pay attention to is the color of them as well. So they're roughly the same size, but they're kind of shaped differently because they're all curled up. Now these ones, it's going to take them a little bit to get kicking back and growing. As you pan over here, you can also see that we've got really good color, really good structure, really good shape, um, totally unaffected by the spray. So what's going on here is we've got a really cool tool with this eco spray to be able to utilize less pounds of AI, less herbicide overall. We're gonna reduce the overall usage and we're just gonna target the weeds. That's all we wanna spray. We don't want these onions to get shut down by that. So really cool look at that. Now we're gonna take you over and we're actually gonna see this thing in action. We're here today, pleasure to be out here with the l, &L Ag. They've got some really cool technology. I've got Cody here with me. He's just going to drop some of the basics on this thing. They've got really good spray technology. The goal here is really to reduce the pounds of AI that we put on soils that we oh. get in. Uh, it also is going to be more efficient for the farmer and cost savings and things like that. So I'm going to just let Cody talk a little bit about what this setup is and uh, what they're doing with it. Yeah, sure. So we're, we're still learning about it. It's new for us. We've sprayed about 20 acres with it right now. Um, we were just doing the math with you guys. Uh, we sprayed 20 acres with a total of 60 gallons. Normally we would use about a thousand to cover that whole field, mostly water, um, about 16 ounces of active ingredient or of product. We used, we figured what, one, I think one ounce an acre across the whole field. Um, the pictures that we've gotten, you guys looked at the onions themselves yesterday, they're a lot more upright. They're not getting, they're not even getting in touch with the herbicide. So. There's a huge advantage there. We're waiting to see what that looks like. Like I said, still figuring it out, still learning some new weeds, trying to figure out how to spray those. Um, it's gonna hit its second field today, but we're a little overkill on 600 gallons of tanks because that'll spray most of the farm, it seems like at this rate. But uh, yeah, the basics of the machine, there's six cameras on here, um, two per um, kind of section here. There's 156 different nozzles and you can do the math, but I think they're about an inch and a half, two inches apart. and the cameras will identify you know, which ones to activate to cover a big weed, a small weed. And then you can put safe zones around each of those onions and say, don't spray within an inch, a centimeter, whatever you wanna be. Um, or we can tell this thing just to spray the onions. Um, so if we're putting on a fungicide, we'll use that feature. We can tell it to spray everything but the onions, so just the dirt, weeds, everything else. Uh, so a lot of cool features there. We're hoping we can put on two products at the same time eventually, but we'll get there. Um, what other things can we talk about of this bad boy? Because um, right now we're spraying onions with it, but they have a lot of different recipes or algorithms for different crops. We've got one in there for beans. Uh, the big thing, this is the first year I'm hoping to see volunteer potatoes come up in our onions so we can go spray them with this. But uh, we're still working through figuring out what rates to use, what, you know, what amount of product to put on there to, to be effective. We can obviously go a little bit more concentrated than our normal our normal mix because we're not touching the onions at all. Yeah, so this is a 7930, relatively high horsepower tractor. This machine weighs the the sprayer itself weighs all of 2,500 pounds. So we're we're pretty overkill on the tractor, but this is kind of all we got on the farm. So um, they actually do come with their own tanks tank system. We retrofitted the system to fit with our current spray system, but. Uh, going forward, I think we'll use their system because you've got to flush this thing out with water every night. There's little solenoids on each of those 156 nozzles. You got to clean them out at the end of the night or they get stuck. So learning curve there, but it doesn't take much tractor. Uh, you need, I think, 90 horsepower at most. So again, we're, we're a little overkill, but it's what we got. And um, we're cruising about 
three and a half to four and a half miles an hour. The, there's an app on a little tablet in the cab that runs the whole machine and it'll tell you the weed pressure, it'll tell you if you need to speed up, slow down. Um, the first fit we did had pretty moderate average weed pressure, so we were cruising a little over four miles an hour. Um, the field we're going to has got a little bit more pressure, so I'm anticipating going slower, but still pretty darn fast. You know, if we can go three and a half, we can cover a lot of ground, but it doesn't take much on the PTO. That thing is ramped way, way down just to run a little generator that runs each of those computers. Super, super easy. Um, obviously it's lightweight, so it's easy to handle through the field. It folds up, which is a very European deal. These are, these are made in Switzerland, so everything folds there. They got to get down narrow roads. We're used to taking up the whole road with our 20 foot implements here in Washington, but this thing folds up, cruises down the road. I mean, you can't even tell it's there if you didn't look back, to be honest with you. And then, um, yeah. So one of the things that we really talk about a lot at Regen Ag is reducing overall chemical usage. Yeah. There's a lot of reasons for that. And a lot of, you know, some of them are environmental. Some of them have to do with EIQ scores at the end of the day. Some of them have to do with just the efficiency and, and costs related to farming. Uh, but additionally, the big one for us is plant health. And that's something that we focus on. We're trying to optimize photosynthesis, yeah. plant health, because at the end of the day, a healthy plant is always going to do better. So talk to me about how, uh, so we looked at these yesterday in the field. Uh, talk to me about a traditionally broadcast spray field versus this and why you guys are interested in this from a plant health perspective. Well, I mean, the obvious thing we first saw is this field that we broadcast sprayed, those leaves were kind of laying over a little bit. They just looked sick little discoloration on them. The field that we sprayed with this, you know, maybe 1% of the onions got hit with a little bit of herbicide. Those things were dead upright. We're thinking, and you and I talked about it yesterday, we're thinking we can get, you know, several days of growth more out of these things where they're not, you know, having to recover and get healthy again, really. And so from a perspective for us, we grow for a lot of onion ring processors and single centeredness in onions is paramount to our business. And we're thinking, and this, a lot of this is theory, but we're thinking that those plants don't have that stop and go growth. The single centeredness will be improved. Um, a lot of that's varietal, but if we can do anything in our power to do that, um, this, is a, this is a great tool to achieve that. And then just general health, right? We've, we've seen some issues. We all had issues with onions the last year, um, whether it's bacterial, mold, all these different things. The last year had a lot of challenges, but we're hoping with this, we can have a healthier plant so that when those issues do come on, it's better suited to defend itself. And that's the whole point of our business. That's why we've been talking to you guys, is we wanna have a healthier plant that can defend itself. Because these issues aren't gonna just go away. There's no silver bullet, but there's tools in our disposable working with you guys using machines like this, where we can put them into use, have a better plant. It's not gonna be bulletproof, nothing is, but this will help us get closer to that, I think, hopefully. Yeah, and for us, um, that's one of the things we've always struggled with a little bit in regenerative ag is how do we tackle these issues with weeds? Because that, you know, reducing usage of chemical and things like that, yeah. that's one thing. We can do a lot of that nutritionally, plant health, soil health, all that, but weeds are always gonna be around. They're always gonna be an issue. They're always gonna yeah. limit quality, yield, uh, stand, all those things. So. I mean, having technology like this is paramount in terms of being able to solve those issues yeah. and do it in a way that, that's efficient for you guys. So let's talk about the, the economics of it from the farming standpoint, because that's important to you guys, obviously. <laughs> uh, it sounds like at this point, you might be able to utilize up to 90% less chemical. I mean, yeah. what does that mean from an economic standpoint and what's the ROI on something like that? Yeah, and, and that's definitely one way to look at it. We wanna use less chemical. We don't want to say too much because our chemical guy may get a little nervous, but <laughs> but the big payoff on this thing is we, we hand weed these fields and that can be hundreds and hundreds of dollars a year. If we can save, you know, one trip with the hand crew through the field across, you know, every acre, which is, we'll see, but it'll pay for itself really, really quickly. I mean, this machine compared to some of the other options for weed control is very affordable. You know, if you look at a laser weeder, you're north of a million, million and a half. Uh, this is a fraction of that and the big thing like we're talking about on the plant health if we don't have to go in and hand weed those it, it sounds like it won't happen but those those hose nick the weeds and then for those of us that have issues with volunteer potatoes those potato if you don't actually get the potato piece out of the ground it's just going to come back right so if we can spray it and kill it there's a lot of an advantage there and then just 
using less active ingredients is going to be going to be critical because finding the time to get that product out there, getting the people out there, the amount of tractors. I mean, we run three three to five different sprayers at once, and that just takes people to do that. And this is a way where we can cover a lot of the ground in a single pass at a pretty decent pace and not have to put a ton of product out there. We've got one full-time guy, all he does is mix chemical for us. And I joked with him that he's gonna be out of a job. He, he's got plenty else to do, he knows we're kidding, but um, his workload's gonna really drop significantly if this, you know, if this comes to fruition to the scale that we'd like. And so those sort of things are the, where we get the ROI, right? The chemical's one thing, there's some savings sure. there, but just the, the savings on hand labor, the improved yield, I think, will get some more onions. And that's the other thing. These little onions, especially at this stage, they're, they're all out of the ground for the most part, but if there's one that's lagging, you know, it's, if it's one leaf and the rest of the field's two or three leaves, and it gets hit with a broadcast spray, that may knock that thing out, right? Completely. So there's loss of stand. And then when you have those little open spaces in the field, the onions don't quite grow the same, right? We, want, we don't want cookie cutters, but it'll, the ones next to it will steal the nutrition. That thing will never catch up if it doesn't die, right? And so those little things add up. And I mean, this, these pay for themselves so quickly, it's crazy. Um, and then just saving the time, mixing the chemicals, going out there and spraying it. And then, you know, just those onions sip, you know, they get knocked back. We were just talking about it yesterday. There's some products we got to get put on, but after they get sprayed, we, we don't need to water them, right? Because they're, they're kind of sick. They don't, it's been cold out, but if they're healthier, we can give them that shot of water or whatever it needs and they're, they're more receptive to it. So again, just back to having a healthier plant. Sure. So tons of benefits there with this uh, technology. Um, one of the things that we talk about is not just the ability to do something, but the ability to scale it. You guys have a good size operation here. Uh, talk to me about the scalability of one unit, what you think you can get out of it in terms of how many acres you can get to spray. Yeah. Um, that, that way people have an understanding of yeah. just how much it's gonna be able to cover. So, you know, conservatively, we can cover maybe 60 to 80 acres a day with this thing. You're going four and a half miles an hour, so you're covering pretty good ground, nine acres an hour-ish, eight to nine. So if we can cover, you know, for us, we're doing pivots, right? A pivot's 120 or so acres, 130. If we can cover that in two days, it's definitely slower than a broadcast sprayer, right? Because those are, for us, 60 feet. This is 20 feet, but you get two or three of these, we can cover the whole farm like we normally would with our broadcast sprayers. If it's a little slower, so be it. We're gonna have healthier plants and we may not need to be in there spraying as frequently is the hope. But the beauty of these, like I said, we can go spray this on our other crops. We grow vegetable seed crops, so hybrid sweet corn seed, hybrid carrot seed, we grow garden beans, peas, all these different things. And as they add more algorithms, more recipes to this, it just continues to scale and we can go across more and more acres with it. Um, and then again, help pay this machine off a little bit quicker, which again, it's not a huge investment to be perfectly honest with you. It, it's, it's very reasonable. But for us to be able to go out and cover not just the onions, but other crops um, is really, really valuable. And I haven't seen that with a lot of the other options out there. Yeah, awesome, that's huge. So uh, another part of this is just technology is coming in and uh, changing the game in farming. We love it. Uh, so l and here in Connell is just a first class uh, farm. I mean, they do things right. And so just looking at this type of technology to be able to increase efficiency in their program and uh, reduce overall chemical usage. I mean, it just checks all the boxes. We're really excited to see how this turns out and follows along. We're gonna get it out in the field as well. Thank you, Cody, for yeah, your time. Yeah, and, glad to see uh, you guys. We'll keep checking in with you. Yeah.